Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Zoe with Bomb Doc Travels, and we sailed the Disney Dream in January of 2023. Our sailing was at full capacity. So today I'm gonna share some tips and tricks that you probably haven't heard anywhere else and things to consider when sailing with Disney Cruise Line. One of the things to keep in mind when sailing Disney is it's a different way of cruising. I've sailed Royal Caribbean, MSC, and even Norwegian, where they offer more active activities like the Flow Rider Surf Simulator, live music by the pool, even indoor ice skating, rock wall, go-karts, and even laser tag. But Disney Cruise Line's activities are just not as active. You won't find those fancy things that the newer ships offer. Instead, you'll have more crafts, character meets, trivia, family games. And while this is not bad in any way, it's just something to keep in mind if you've sailed some of the larger, newer ships with other cruise lines. Now, Disney Cruise Line does require you to sign up for any events that you wanna do ahead of your sailing. But if you're a first time cruiser with Disney and you don't get to check in as soon as you'd like, you might find that a lot of those special events and activities are booked up. But have no fear. If you missed out on getting signed up for a character meet or a princess greet during your booking window pre-cruise, don't hesitate to check the app as soon as you step on board on embarkation day. Many times reservations are canceled and things will become available. And if that still fails, make your way over to the guest services desk. They will make every effort to accommodate you if a spot opens up. And if you've been following our channel for a little while, you know that when we first board the ship, we like to go straight for the pool deck. We like to enjoy the pool with fewer crowds, as well as hop on the aqueduct and enjoy the water slides before things get really busy. Most people on boarding day head straight to Cabana's Buffet. We usually play first and eat later. If it's important to you to get the best seat in the house, be sure to arrive to stage shows early. Lines form outside the theater at least 30 minutes before showtime. And did you know, Disney Cruise Line has plastic booster seats available for use during the stage shows? During our sailing, I saw many little ones sitting on their parents' laps struggling to see the stage. So just be sure when you enter the theater to ask a cast member, they'll gladly hand you one. Another pro tip would be to use the stairs when possible. We try to free up the elevator for those with limited mobility, like those who use scooters, wheelchairs, or even parents of little ones in strollers. It definitely helps us to get more exercise and feel less guilty for eating all that free ice cream up on the pool deck. One of the highlights of our Disney cruise was Pirate Night. So if you want to participate and really get in on the fun, don't forget to pack a pirate costume. It's fun for kids and adults to dress up and celebrate. There are deck parties and a special Pirate Night menu in the dining room. Now, don't worry if you've left your pirate gear at home. Have no fear. All Disney Cruise Line ships do sell Pirate Night gear, bandanas, masks, and costumes in the gift shops on board. So be sure to check that out. If you missed riding the aqueduct on embarkation day and you wanna avoid the long lines, don't forget, you can ride even at nighttime. The views from the aqueduct overlooking the pool deck at nighttime are amazing. Now, one thing of course that sets Disney Cruise Line apart from all other cruise lines are their at sea fireworks display. We found the best view for fireworks were deck 12 starboard side that provided for unobstructed views with less crowds than what we saw on deck 11. And if you're like me and want to keep up your workout routine even while on vacation be sure to check out disney's fitness center on the disney dream i found the gym to be quite small so my tip would be to arrive right when the gym opens or wait till later in the afternoon once the crowd has cleared it'll make it much easier to find open and available equipment later in the day if you haven't already don't forget to click like and subscribe it really helps out our channel and allows me to share more travel tips and content do you have any special dietary requests? Do you want to sit in a particular area of the dining room or request a private table? You can do all of this in advance of your cruise on the DCL website. Now, one of the best things about cruising with Disney is Castaway Key. 
When you disembark the ship, we would recommend walking to the beach so as not to miss the photo ops with the characters, as well as capturing some epic shots of the ship in the background. Our next tip would be to set up near Cookies 2 Barbecue. This location had plenty of seating, but we found its proximity to restrooms, the buffet, bathrooms, bike rentals, Pelican's Plunge, and the Heads Up Bar to be ideal. And once you're done having fun in the sun, don't hesitate to hop on the tram for a quick trip back to the ship. It's here that you'll be able to grab some great shots of the cruise ship with the sun setting in the background. Now, one of the most important tips I can give you when sailing with Disney is to plan. We checked out Disney Cruise Line blog online for old cruise navigators. This gave us an idea of what our sailing may be like and helped us to plan out which activities we were most interested in. This ensured we didn't miss out on the major must-dos for our family. So if you do have time before your sailing, I'd highly recommend using an online planner to kind of map out what things are most important to you and your family. That way, you get to do as much as you possibly can, whether you're doing a three-night sailing or a seven-night sailing. And finally, whether you're sailing from Port Canaveral or Miami, if you have a flight that doesn't leave until later in the evening after disembarking, don't hesitate to check out resortpass.com. There you can find very affordable day pass access to local hotels. After our recent cruise, we went to the Hilton Blue Lagoon for the day. From 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., we ate, we swam, we rested for only $10 per child and $15 per adult. And when it was time to head to the airport, we hopped on the free hotel shuttle for a quick five minute ride. And if you found these tips helpful, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Until next time, happy cruising.